Okay, uh, we're going to start on trick identities. Part one is the pencil problems. You do not have to do these. We're going to work on these in class. Part two is some additional odd numbered problems that I'm going to do because I don't think they, um, the book did enough of these. So uh, we'll get started. The thing you need to know about trick identities and the best way to learn them is to make mistakes. And what you're going to do in class is go over them in a group. Everyone in your group is going to do the same one at the same time. And then you're going to compare and see who did, did it the mo most efficient way. You can do these in um, different ways. And if you take an extra couple steps longer to establish the identity, that's fine. So we're going to start with the first one, which is this one. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is you want this side to look like this side. You cannot cross the equal sign. So you only can deal with this side and or this side and make this side look like this side. So if I wanted to, I can kind of look and see what this is. We know that cotangent is really cosine of theta over sine of theta. So I actually manipulated this side first. I'm not crossing over. I'm going to rewrite this one as 1 over sine times cosine. And what we get, this is over 1, is cosine theta over sine. You're going to find you're going to leave off the thetas again. And we get the same thing. Once you have these two sides equal, you're done. Now, if you wanted to, you didn't have to do this step right here. If you already knew what this equals, once you got to here or to here, you could have had this over here as cotan of theta, and from here you could have done cotan of theta equals cotan of theta. Both of these are valid ways to do uh, establish an identity. That was an easy one. You will have one easy one on your quiz. Okay, the next set is not that hard as either. Uh, the sheet I hand out to you says the best way to do these is to rewrite all these in terms of sine and cosine. And that's a good general rule of thought. However, in this case, I know this follows the form of A minus B times A plus B. And we know that these two equal A squared minus B squared. So this is my A, this is my B, A, B. So all I know is I have, uh, if I boil this out, or use, I'm going to use the formula here. I get secant squared of theta minus 1 equals tan, of, tan squared of theta. I know from my identities that we already know that this is tan of theta, tan squared of theta. So I just now established my identity. Okay, or you could have taken this one and rewrote this from the beginning and notice and knew that this was secant squared theta minus one, and then you could have matched those two up. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to get into some of the harder ones. This one is fifty-three, and I can either manipulate this side or I can manipulate this side. And I'm going to choose, since this is pretty simplistic, this side right here is pretty art, is simplistic. I'm not really sure what to do with that side. But this side I know I can manipulate. This is easier, so I'm going to start with this side and make it look like I'm going to work that way. So I know this equals, according to my factoring rules, um, secant squared, and I'm going to start taking out the theta, um, 
minus 2 secant tan times tan plus tan squared. This just follows your a minus b squared formula equals a, equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I didn't do that very well. Let me move it over. So, again, I just know that this is a minus b squared equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So plus. All right. Now I'm going to rewrite these in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this in terms of sine and cosine. This is 1 over cosine squared. This is 2 um, over, or 2 times, let's do it this way, 1 over sine, uh, cosine times sine over cosine. And this is plus sine squared over cosine squared. I'm going to clean this up. I get 1 over cosine squared minus 2 sine over cosine squared plus sine squared over cosine squared. Okay. Let me rewrite it on the next page. I have I'm going to rewrite this. Um, 1 minus 2 sine of theta plus sine squared. Each of these pieces were over cosine, so I'm going to put them all over cosine squared of theta. Remember, they this each piece, each of these pieces were over cosine. So I just put them all over it. Now this, if you rewrite it, or oh, we'll just leave it like this. This right here is 1 minus sine times 1 minus sine. And this, if you recall, that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So this really equals 1 minus cosine squared, the theta. So I'm going to write that, um, I mean, sorry, it's sine squared. Based on just manipulating my identity here. So I have 1 minus sine squared theta. This here follows the form of a squared minus b squared. So I have 1 minus sine times 1 minus sine and this is really 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine based on my formula here. a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. Alright, now what happens is these cancel and you're left with this which was our original side on the other side of 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. So we establish the identity. We used our factoring facts and we used our identities. Okay, 69. Now which side do you think we're going to manipulate? This side or this side? There's not really much we can do with this side. So I'm going to manipulate this side. And I do think since this side is sine and cosine, 
I'm going to rewrite all of this in terms of sine and cosine. So this is 1 over cosine minus um, 1 over sine all over 1 over cosine times 1 over sine. Okay. Now, what we're going to do at the top here is find the common denominator. And that's why I had you do those practice problems. If my common denominator is cosine times sine here, I have to have both of these. Then you ask yourself, what times cosine gives me my new denominator, which is sine. So sine times 1 is sine minus what times sine gives me cosine sine and it's cosine so cosine times one is cosine so I just rewrote that with a common denominator all over one over cosine times sine now what's going to happen is these two are going to cancel and you're left with the answer of sine minus cosine, which equals this. So I'm just going to draw an arrow up to there. They equal. Now some of you might ask, how come I can cancel these two? That's just from our, you know, fraction thing. Sine minus cosine over cosine times sine divided by this is the same as times cosine times sine over 1. I just flipped this and multiplied. Those will cancel and you will get this. That's cosine. Okay, I'm going to make another video of this and I'm going to do uh, probably five more odd identities. We're going to spend one day on this. The next day you'll be responsible for using the ones you did in class to help you do the evens. So we're spending two days on 6.3.